presenting your host for the Racecoin podcast, Jay. What's going on, my racing fans? I'm here with Blake Cook. He's a NASCAR driver and an entrepreneur and is someone who has a successful brand called Fills the Time. It's great to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. It's great to connect with you. Yeah. So tell us about your journey. Where did you start? Like, first of all, you started racing at the age of 22. Like, that's so much older than most people. How, how did you get into it so late? Yeah, it was actually, I was, so I was 21 years old mm-hmm. and uh, my stepdad bought this um, truck in Florida. It's called a pro truck. Mm-hmm. And um, he asked me if I wanted to drive it. And I had never even watched NASCAR before. I wasn't interested. Yeah. And I told him, nah, it's okay. You know, I grew up racing dirt bikes and that didn't look like much fun. So uh, he said he was going to let our, our neighbor drive it. And I said, well, before you do that, let me give it a shot and just see if I like <laughs> it before I, you know, pass on this opportunity. Yeah. And um, we went out for a test one day in Orlando, and I absolutely fell in love with it. It was the most fun, I've ever, most fun thing I've ever done. I uh, had a blast. I was fast, was, which is always fun, right, when you're yeah, good course, at something. And then it was just a fast track to there, man. Two years later, I made my NASCAR k n Series debut and signed on as a Richard Childress Racing Development Driver. And two years after that, I made my first nationwide start, which is now Xfinity. It was nationwide back then. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, you know, six cup races and over 200 and something, uh, Xfinity starts. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur now and I started <laughs> my crazy. own company filter time. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, you've just, um, kind of stumbled upon, you know, these, um, these achievements almost. Right. But I'm sure the journey's not as, as, uh, <laughs> as easy as you just made it sound like you've just, you know, flowed through a garden of flowers and things are just, you know, handed to you almost. So talk us through the, the reality of it. Like, how did you actually start off from, you know, getting that first experience behind uh, the truck to how did you get into NASCAR? Yeah, like you said, there's a lot of ups and downs in racing. So it wasn't all ups and all yeah. bright and sunny. <laughs> um, but at first, when my stepdad bought that truck, we went driving. It was pretty standard, working on it ourselves. It was a hobby at that point. Mm-hmm. I was in my last year of college, and it was something we did on the weekends for fun. And then when I decided to take it seriously, you know, you, you have to commit. So and that's, let's, let's, let's go into that. Like, yeah. how did you transition from hobby to, do you know what, I want to do this seriously? Man, that, that's just how I am. Like, I, I'm like, <laughs> I want to be the best. I started watching it on TV, and I saw these guys um, racing and winning and making a lot of money. I was like, man, if those guys can do it, I can do it. Like <laughs> it's not that hard. Right. And all it's going to take is some hard work and commitment and relationships and I'm going to give it a shot. So yeah. I decided to, to take this dream into a reality. I started calling all the NASCAR teams, every mm-hmm. single one of them and telling them that I was their next driver and they needed to see me meet with me. Yeah. And a few gave me a call back, but one gave me a really good opportunity. And that was Richard Childress Racing. Mike Dillon actually called me back, Austin and Ty's dad. And he said, hey, we have a, you know, an affiliate team in the K&N West Series. And um, you should talk to them. It's called Golden Gate Racing Team. So I flew out to California, met with those guys. They're like, hey, if you can come up with half the sponsorship, we'll let you run our backup car in the championship race. And this is in 2008, October 2008. Oh, um, session. Yeah, my the first NASCAR race I ever watched was 2007 Daytona 500. So 2008, I'm already about nice. to drive for Richard Childress. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I found the sponsorship dollars. It was I'll just be open and honest. It was 25,000 bucks mm-hmm. I had to come up with. And um, I'm from Palm Beach, Florida. Know some wealthy people. Started making some phone calls, and my dad made some phone calls, and we and we ended up. Um, having a meeting with this very successful entrepreneur and he's like, Hey, this sounds great. It'll be on TV. We'll make it uh, the godspeaks.com car, make it a ministry. It's cool. This is cool. This is fun. Yeah. And I was like, great. So then, <laughs> yeah. uh, then, then I was like, okay, well, I only have like 12 races total under my belt. Now I'm about to go drive for Richard Childress racing on television. And I kind of don't really know every, like, I'm not that confident at this point. I'm like, this is reality. Yeah. I'm about to yeah, go yeah. have my shot. It's almost like you got everything before you even prepared for everything yeah, in yeah. terms of like getting yourself ready. Yeah. So Absolutely. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. It normally it's the other way around for so many people. Like they're training for years and years and years yeah. and still like don't even get the sponsorship money, still struggling, you know, and it's just been the other way around for you, which is crazy. Yeah. And I was old, you know, I was 
you know, 21 years old and I, 22 at this point, 23. And I understood business, right? Like it's mm -hmm. a business. And I knew that I just graduated from business college. Like I kind of have an idea yeah. what people are looking for, why it's on TV, like just the whole business model. <clears throat> and I got it. So, so to make my debut, I went out there to the K&N series. Mm -hmm. I ended up qualifying fourth and out qualifying the primary driver, the RCR development driver. Oh man! And, uh, and then they signed me doing a development deal next year, and I raced full time in the Canon series. So <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it worked. And then I had a horrible year. I mean, I crashed a lot, tore up a lot of equipment, didn't win Rookie of the Year, which still haunts me. I finished second in Rookie of the Year to Paul Hiraka, um, and that's 2009. And then 2009, I made my first nationwide start at uh, at Memphis. Well, the Xfinity now, Xfinity start at Memphis. And so I how did you start training in all of this though because i mean i feel like there's, there's been a huge skip in training that we haven't really kind well, of talked i didn't about. i didn't man um, <laughs> what do you mean you didn't train <laughs> well, yeah, i really had no idea i just went for it i, I mean i've afraid. spoken to i've spoken to quite a few races now right these guys started at the age of like four five yeah. you know six seven max you know like by the time you're seven it's like you're seven you know yeah, <laughs> and, i know um, Right now, I mean, these guys have like training like four or five, you know, every day of their life, if not at least four or five times a week, you know, training neck muscles and this and that and just going nuts. And here you are, it's just like, oh, I got into a car, you know, I just <laughs> hopped into the race. And <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's some new, new uh, info. I've never, yeah. never heard it described like that. So, okay. Yeah. Talk to me about that. So but how I did didn't you go? win? And if I probably would have trained correctly, I probably could have had a shot at winning, but I finished seventh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then when did you win. get your first trainer then? Like when did you start uh, actually training properly? Um, I would say training, well, training properly is, is a broad, you know, yeah, of course, of course. Somebody thinking there. So now I'm actually a driver coach here for two drivers in NASCAR, Harrison Burton and trucks. Mm -hmm. And Matt Tifton Cup, I'm their driver coach. And I make sure that they're training and prepared the, the way they need to prepare. The way I wish I would have done it when I first started out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, when did I start properly training? I would say 2016. And my last year was 2017. Wow. Yeah, so 2016, had a really good opportunity. I was like, I'm going to make the most of this. I hired a personal trainer, got on a nutrition plan, got a racing simulator in my house. Mm -hmm. watched videos every day and was just completely prepared, made the playoffs that year, finished sixth in points in the Xfinity series. And, uh, and then 2017, I had a great year, won a couple stages, won a pole at Talladega and made the playoffs again. And, uh, and then that was my last time driving after losing my sponsor. Okay. So talk us through some of the lows, you know, how, how, what does it feel like to lose a sponsor? How do you then kind of come out of that and, you know, hopefully soon we can kind of move into the business aspect of it naturally. Yeah. Some of the lows, man. I mean, after I made my first Xfinity start, I was like, man, I'm going to go full time. I had some meetings in Florida with sponsors. Mm -hmm. I had a contract. I had commitments with a big race team. So my career could have been a totally different path. Yeah. Um, but that de it was a huge deal to drive for a cup affiliated team um, back in 2011 Mm -hmm. And the deal fell apart. And I just remember being in Florida, sitting on my couch, being like, man, like this is, this is heartbreaking. Like you already mm -hmm. tell people you're committed, you have a yeah. contract, you're shopping the deal and it all this falls is a apart. dream. Yeah. Yeah. This is a dream come true. You're starting to tell your friends and yeah. like building you know, it up and then it just all falls yeah. apart. Yeah. And what, then it falls the reason? apart. As in, and, what was the reason if I can ask, like, why did it fall apart in the first place? Yeah, oh, they decided to go, they got a new marketing director in the company and they decided to go sponsor an IndyCar instead of me in the Xfinity series. Okay, okay. And that's the direction they went. And um, man, it was just, I, I just remember uh, it, that such a humbling experience of like, you, you, you're so proud, you have this path, it was all easy for you, you got a sponsor, you're about to make it, and then it all gets taken away. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, at that point you have to think, okay, do I feel sorry for myself? Do I give up? Do I quit? What do I do? And that's just not in my blood, man. So I just started working hard. Me and my dad were calling sponsors and other team owners. And we ran across a sponsor that wanted to see me race in the Xfinity Series full-time. And that's when I got my full-time ride in, in 2011. And then 2012, moved teams, lost my sponsor again, which was a new sponsor. 
Um, my wife's pregnant. We just bought a house. I have no job. I started oh, um, driving Trevor Bain's motorhome for him to the racetracks to pay my bills mm. and doing the start and park deal for different trucks and Xfinity series teams. And then got linked up with another team owner by the end of the year in 2013. I'm back in a race car. I have a, a great opportunity at the end of the year to race the 99 car for Robbie Benton at Homestead. And I qualified second. And that was kind of like a career moment for me because yeah. at this point, people are used to seeing me around 25th and qualifying, racing for underfunded teams. And I get a decent opportunity and almost qualifying the pole. I missed it to uh, Sam Hornish beat me for the pole. Mm -hmm. for the pole. And that was kind of a career moment where I knew I had what it took. And I just needed the right partners and the right relationships. And had a, uh, the next year, I had a good job at TriStar Motorsports to, to race the Xfinity Series, do some starting parks. And I got to do some cup races, and then I met Leaf Filter Gutter Protection, which was my big sponsor for three years. Okay, can I pause you there for a second yep. and just dig in a little bit? Why at this point, right, in hindsight, I mean, I think you can tell me a little bit more clearly. Did you feel like at that stage when you were coming, you know, in 25th, 26th, and, you know, you, were, you weren't performing at possibly your optimal level, why you didn't think, do you know what, I should get a coach and start training so that I can actually you know improve my skill set rather than keep going in the cycle of getting sponsors not quite doing well enough to then get more sponsors and more sponsors and more sponsors yeah because no matter how good of a coach you hire mm -hmm. and no matter how many videos you watch and the effort you put in if you're in a race car that's slow you're not mm -hmm. gonna be able to show your skill set so i put all my effort into the business side to finding the sponsors to getting the opportunities and when i got that opportunity I did prepare. I had about a month to prepare. I was watching videos, working out, mm. went and saw a nutritionist. I remember going to see an, like an allergy specialist because I had allergies and she put me on Flonase and I started using better air filters in my house. That was an air filter plug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, really, I, was like, I was committed to that one race, right? So I yeah. trained a little bit, but not, I didn't have the money to hire a trainer, someone like me, you know, an experienced NASCAR driver to help you and train you. I didn't have the money for it. Mm. I just had the sponsorship to go run a fast car and I did everything I could on my own. So what would you say to someone who is in your, who would be in your position again, who doesn't have the money and is still trying to hustle their way like you were doing, you know, back then, what would you, what would you have done any differently? Like, is there anything you could have done? Um, you know, I, I probably would have done less, I always thought I needed to gain experience and it was better to run full time in an underfunded team than a few races in a top team. I always thought like I needed that experience. I needed to learn if I could go back and do it again, I would take all the sponsorship money I had and I would bring it to a team with a quality car, a quality equipment in a winning race car mm -hmm. and go try to run up front for a couple of races. Cause I, I believe you can, I believe there's ways nowadays to, do eye racing and go to the simulator and hire a coach and ways to prepare yourself for those opportunities that you can maximize it without needing the years of experience in that series. It's interesting you say that, right? Because um, on, a, on a joke level, right, in Tokyo Drift, right, if you've seen it in Fast and Furious, there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a part where it goes, it's not about the ride, it's by the rider, right? <laughs> and here yeah. you are saying the opposite, which is where it's about the ride, and the rider, right? Yeah. So it's one of these things I feel where, you know, you do have to definitely kind of take both into consideration naturally, right? And, yeah. um, you know, now that you have this company Filter Time, right? Um, talk us through that journey. So walk us through how Filter Time came about and how, you know, you got stuck into an entire business aspect of life as well. Yeah, perfect. I love talking about this. I, don't, I haven't been able to share this story much either. So I'm glad I get to share it with you. But uh, January 9th, 2018, so a little over a year ago, I got a call from my team owner that I didn't have a ride anymore and that they weren't going to sponsor me and thanks, but like, but you can go do whatever you want to do. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, this is January 9th. It's too late to find a ride, too late to find a sponsor because people already do their sponsor deals in October yeah, or even earlier. And I was like, man, what the heck am I going to do? So. I started thinking, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go race Global Rallycross series. That looks fun. So I started calling all these companies I knew and different sponsors and try to raise money to go do Global Rallycross racing. I had, a, I had a bunch of companies interested actually, and I was really looking forward to it. And then they announced that the GRC series shut down. 
And there was no global Red Bull global, global Rally Cross Series. It's like, oh gosh, that's another waste. So like, and then I try to get sponsors to go run a car for Gibbs or one of the top teams. I was trying to get some big money to go run a, a few races in a winning car and go win because I knew that I could go win. I just came off the two best seasons of my career and I was confident, which I still am. I know if I got in a winning race car, I could win. Um, but every door was shut, man. I, there wasn't one company, one opportunity. And this was unlike what I experienced throughout the, the past years of my career. The doors yeah, were always open. Months and months and months already. Yeah. Well, right? well, I only gave it about three weeks. But when I say three weeks, I'm talking 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. of researching, calling, emailing, um, proposals, LinkedIn, like everything you can think of. I worked harder than you possibly can for, for those few weeks. And there was no, op no doors open, no opportunities available. And I was like, man, you know, this is not, this is not looking good. And I'm, I'm praying like, God, what do you want me to do? I got to provide for my family. You know, I was able to save some money over the years, but not enough to not have a job. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, man, I have, a, I was driving to Lowe's to go buy air filters and I forgot to buy air filters. So I left Lowe's, bought a bunch of stuff that I didn't need and I forgot air filters the whole reason I went there. And I was like, there's gotta be a better way to buy air filters. Like it's such an important thing in your home, but it's such a pain in the butt. Mm. And I thought of like an air filter subscription. I was like, man, that would be huge if I could just go online, pick out my air filters from my house and they just show up every two or three months or every month, whenever I want them. Mm -hmm. And I uh, did some research and I found out that there was a huge market for it. And I was like, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing it. I'm committed. I came up with the name Filter Time, bought the domain name for a lot of money because someone else owned it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, put a lot on the line, a lot of risk. And um, then just fully committed, man. And in the meantime, I got a few extra jobs to help pay the bills because, you know, when you're starting a business, you don't get paid yeah, for a long time yeah. as a Center. you pay everybody else but yourself you got to figure out how to make money so i started doing driver coaching for matt tiffs myatt snyder and harrison burton and i also have my job on fs1 on their show uh, nascar race hub on tuesday nights as the xfinity series analyst so i have those three things going or two things going on driver coaching and, and nascar analyst that pays my bills and i love it because i'm still involved with the racing i can talk racing and nascar and things i love but i'm building this business behind the scenes and I launched it May 28th of 2018 last year. And it's just been unbelievable, man. It's just been incredible opportunity. Every single, these, the doors that open for it just blow me away. And the new opportunities that come mm -hmm. weekly to me, I just have a hard time sleeping at night because I'm so excited to wake up the next day and work <laughs> and see what's going to happen today. And all the doors shut for racing, but all the ones open for my business. And that's a pretty good sign to me that this is the direction yeah, I'm I mean, going. It's, it's weird how life just directs you in ways that you didn't even know that were coming, right? I mean, from yeah. uh, even in 2019, if I'm not wrong, you were going to be uh, riding and you know, racing for NASCAR again, but um, you turned down that opportunity? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, it, there's a lot to it. You know, Ross Chastain got a, a great opportunity to leave the four car and go drive a different car. And then I got asked to be the replacement of Ross in the four car. And I was like, well, this is great. This is fun. I worked out a deal. I could put filter time on the car and really just go have fun and build my business on the side, maybe meet some potential customers at the racetrack and use it for my business. Mm -hmm. Well, then in December, um, I, I, had, I had a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity come to filter time to me, and, and I accepted it, and, um, and I'm just completely blown away by it. And uh, then I started thinking, <laughs> man, how am I going to juggle all this? How am I going to do it all? Yeah, um, exactly. This was, that was going to be my next question. I mean, you're an yeah. analyst, you're coaching people, you've got a full-time business, and here you are, you know, kind of dipping in and out of racing all the time. Like, Where's family time? Where's, where's yeah. any downtime? Where's, where is any other time, you know? Yeah, I know. I mean, I, you know, I, I, my son started racing dirt bikes last year. He's six now. And when he found out I was going to race again, he was pretty bummed. He's like, well, who's going to take me racing? You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm a little bit sad. Yeah. Um, but really I just had a decision to make. What's the best thing for my family's future? And, um, and it's filter time. And the smartest thing for me to do was step away from racing for the time being, focus on my, on my great opportunity with filter time, get this business role and get to build up, 
to where it's like a slogan. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, when you said, What's the best thing I can do for my family? Feels the time. Sorry, you're saying. Yeah, so decided to focus on that. It all worked out perfect because Ross Chastain became avail- available. He could slide back into that four car, mm-hmm. and it's all great, man. It just, um, the season's back rolling. I still have my deal with Fox. I'm still a driver coach for Harrison Burton, Matt Tift, and I still have filter time, and it's growing like crazy and um and i think the first week of april i'm gonna be able to announce what this what this big deal uh is one about yeah Mm -hmm. nice so um what similarities are there between filter time right and running your own business and being behind the wheel because i've just recently spoke to uh mike gauss who who talked about the similarities and i'd like to hear your perspective about this as well about what kind of similar traits what kind of similar um mental um hurdles do you have to cross when you have a business um versus when you're behind the wheel yeah i mean there there are some similarities but but it's extremely different man i mean being a race car driver is great i mean yeah there's a lot of pressure a lot on the line a lot of people spending a lot of money Mm -hmm. you're expected to win but not tear up equipment so take big risk but not too much risk and wreck (laughs) you have a lot of appearances and you just have so much on your mind of how to get better are you going to have a job next year? Are you, is your sponsor going to come back? Are they happy? There's a lot of anxiety that comes with it, man. There's a lot of things mm. that you can't control. So even when you're home, you know, my mind's still in racing. Even when I'm with my family, I'm still thinking about racing as a driver. But there are perks to it. There's, you know, you have a PR person. You have somebody setting your schedules. You have somebody <laughs> yeah. setting up PR deals, yeah. um, press releases, uh, helping you with social media. When you get out of a car, you have somebody standing there with a hat, sunglasses, and an ice cold rag and water <laughs> bottle. I mean, like you're treated great, right? Yeah, there's um, perks. But there is perks. But then, as as a business owner, you know the results come strictly out of how much work you put in. So now I'm able to just put in all this work, and I don't have to worry about it all being in the hands of someone else if they're going to renew with me, if they're going to fire me or whatever. It's mm-hmm. the results of some of the effort I put in, and I like working. So I know that the effort and the amount of work I put into filter time equals mm-hmm. results, equals customers, equals sales, equals a future for my family. And I really like that. The, the hard part is, is I have to learn to do all this stuff I've never done before. Like you and I, for instance, setting up this interview, I had to learn how to set my schedules and try to balance everything and figure out what I have time for and what I don't have time for. And I forget stuff easily. And uh, I had to learn how to do my own social media, create these accounts. Everything with Filter Time you see, I created, I started. I, start, I built the website, had it built, hired people to ship the filters. Um, mm-hmm. My social media, getting started, being run, answering questions, answering emails, it's all me. And as a driver, you have other people doing that kind of stuff for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you have no control in the future. Mm-hmm. And um, with Filter Time, there is some pressure. You do have to build it. But... But like, it, it's it's more fun to build because you you can it's see yours. Longer. It's fully yeah, yours, and there. you've got this. You know, you can kind of trust yourself if no one else. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like if I if I don't like the way things are being done, I fix it. Well, as a driver, if you don't like the way things are done, you're just a driver. Like, <laughs> that's <with> it. The <laughs> thing, you know? Yeah. So I just feel like there's a lot more. I have a lot more control of of the success of the business as mm. I did when I was a driver and I absolutely love it. And like you said, there, there is pressure. I got to make money. I got to build a company for my family, pay my bills, mm-hmm. but I absolutely love it. And here's the similarity is when I was a race car driver, it was all about my fans. It was all about fan interaction, taking care of my fans, autograph requests, meeting them, meet and greets, all this. Well, it feels the exact same with me for filter time. All of my customers feel like fans. Everybody that subscribes to the air filter subscription feels like my fans. I email them. I thank them. I talk to them on social media. How are your filters? How are they doing? Do you like them? Like it's just a total customer interaction with me, not just a website. Like it's me behind the scenes Mm. and it feels the same as if I was a driver. So that's the part I really love about it. That's awesome, Blake. That's awesome, man. I mean, I feel like you've really shared um, the entire breadth of, you know, what life is kind of, been for you in the last 10 odd years you know yeah i feel like one last thing that i'd like to ask is what information or what piece of nugget of um the essence of what you've learned would you like to live 
uh, leave with um, the fans that are listening. So what would you like to leave them with that, you know, would help them with their life and their journey after listening to you? Yeah, I mean, everybody's in a different journey, right? Some people are at the highs right now. Some yeah. people are at the lows. Mm -hmm. uh, but it all, everything I feel like comes down to putting passion behind whatever you're doing. So having a great attitude, staying positive, um, being passionate about what you're doing, working hard. And you can't really worry about the results or worry about, oh, you're not doing what you love right now. You just have to keep on pushing, keep saying, I read, I read every morning. I read, I listen to podcasts about positive motivation. I read the Bible every morning, get pumped up. I listen to great music. I work hard to stay positive, surround myself with great people, positive people. And man, it, it, you can be happy no matter what you're doing. Like I'm more happy now to this day than I was two years ago when I was racing the Xfinity series. I'm just more happy about it. And, um, and I don't know why, other than the fact that I work hard and stay positive and motivated and, and set goals and chase my dreams. And I, I just love doing it. That's awesome, Blake, man. I mean, I think you've really, really kind of just um, been so unsuperficial and just been so real in this that um, I hope the fans can feel it. And I hope they, they love the podcast and uh, I hope they get some filter time. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Anybody listening, if you need air filters for your house, filtertime.com. You pick out your air filters and how often you want to receive them to replace them. And then they just show up automatically. You never have to worry about buying air filters again. Cool. It's been great having you on the RaceCoin podcast. Awesome. Thanks so much, man.